When we're going through a divorce, emotions, they run high and the combination of despair and dread leaves us feeling powerless. We try to forget our living hell, but nobody said that living hell is easy and like any addiction, we obsess and that obsession rolls into resentment and bitterness and it slowly kills you from within. While anger is considered the second of the five stages of grief for divorcing men, it doesn't work that way and anger is often the last of the emotions as it often stays with us. For many, the injustice of all that took place leaves us in such disbelief that anger, it becomes a coping mechanism. You're so angry that you'll share your story with anyone at the price of your dignity because let's face it, most people, including some of our besties, they get uncomfortable when we talk about our ex, but we talk and we talk because, well, they're your circumstances. So you share your story with anyone, even if they don't have any business knowing your business. At first, you're pissed because she's been such a bitch. Then you're angry at yourself because you should have fought back harder only to go back at being angry at her because you can't believe the greed. She demands half your shit. Can this anger be turned into something productive or will it destroy you? What happens with this anger? Let's find out. Let's start revving that engine. Oh, yeah. And don't expect this to be a touch of feely video about anger with regarding re repressed emotion. This is the real deal. Let's start revving that engine. Hi, everyone. My name is Rene Garcia, and I'm a divorce coach for men. I've worked with thousands of men just like you to provide them with the tools necessary to thrive, not just survive, but to thrive in a post-divorce world. People, including many therapists, they just say to hang in there, to give it time. But that's the lazy answer because it's just a default answer and that's just not good enough. It's, it's the status quo. I mean, what kind of professional says to hang in there? What are you paying them for? That's the unacceptable outcome because my goal, my mission is to have you find the superlative version of you. To come out of this with so much better that the day will come when you just start feeling sorry for your ex. You wouldn't even fuck her for sport. So your ex, she wants a divorce and you kiss and you kiss and you kiss her ass to no avail. Turns out that little ray of sunshine, that love of your life, that sephir in your breeze. She grew some crazy ass clouds in your sephir. It turned into a hurricane. Hurricane Katie. She changed identity from wife to crazy ass woman that you don't recognize, leaving you fighting back with one hand tied behind your back because you still love her and you don't want to hurt her. But... While you're treating her with kid gloves, she's not pulling any punches here, pro proving the old adage that you never know who you married until you divorce them. So what do you do? Well, if you're like many, including myself, you pucker up and kiss her ass. But to add insult to injury, you feel sorry for yourself and you begin to pray for her to love you once more. But the problem is that you're stuck in the days when she did love you, when your new reality is that she's fallen out of love with you. So you pray and you pray some more, thereby using hope as a tactic. As time goes and the reality of your circumstance starts to hit you, you realize that your ass has been nothing but a simp with low self-esteem. You become a eunuch, a kendo, a puseta. So you go from a state of deep sadness to anger at, at her, yourself, and the world because not only did you lose the love of your life, but now you have to start all over again. Perhaps she had an entanglement with an ex or a co-worker and accidentally fell in love with him. But her cognitive dissonance, it's telling her that she's in the right here because, well, society, it makes women think that cheating is a symptom of a bad relationship rather than what it really is. A boot or character. Just watch Crazy Stupid Love and see how Steve Carell justifies his ex's entanglement. Ex's entanglement. So you're done with the self-pity phase and you graduate to the anger phase. and. This can occasionally be a healthy thing because you can use it to your advantage. As a coach, in order to get men from where they're, uh, they're feeling sorry for themselves face, I try to move them up the evolution of uh, emotions into the anger phase, but not in the way that you may be thinking. When guys are angry after a breakup, they're bitter and they speak with a level of fervor that one can almost smell the sulfur coming out of their pores as they curse their ex. But if anything, that's, that's hatred. That's not anger. When I say anger, I mean getting pissed that you settled, that you let yourself go, that you didn't set boundaries with her as she was disrespecting you and that, that you lowered your standards to what a relationship needs to be. This is where you have to self-reflect and you got to ask yourself why you're so angry. Is it that the shit didn't turn out the way you expected it to? Or you spent so much of your time kissing her ass at the price of your dignity? Or... How about the money that you spent or worse, like those years, those years that you wasted, leaving you only with fading memories? Or 
Are you angry that you invested in something thinking that it was a blue ship stock when in reality it was just a penny stock? Or are you mostly angry at how she took you for granted and picked her own existential crisis over the man that she swore to share her existence with? It was all just a mirage. Why are you so angry? Because she quit on you. She gave up and that makes her a liar and you take it personal as the divorce. It's on and papers get filed, but adding to the confusion is that she goes on talking as though nothing ever happened. So here's what ends up happening. Pre-filing, you're still in the disbelief and the awe of your misery and angry that you lost her face. Post-filing, well, that shit changes and it goes from a position of misery to one of anger because now, now you realize how the system is unjust, how she gets to call the shots despite wanting out, how she's a quitter and quitters they don't get to call the shots. That's not the way things work. Quitters leave a pile of shit behind for someone else to clean up, but they still lose. Somehow, however, our system, it dictates it differently. And as a divorce coach, I've always said that that's what keeps me up at night, the laws, because you just don't have control over it. Our system, it dictates that she can quit a marriage and still get some of your shit. That's like filing for bankruptcy and keeping what you owe and that's a hard pill to swallow as often. It's the men that are giving six or seven figures on their 401k or their pension, forcing them to retire much later than hope. And if that doesn't make you angry, then there's something to be concerned of here because that's just not justice. And this time, it involves you. But I'd rather you angry that you're paying for her existential crisis than be surrendering like a cat with his paws up because that means that now you begin to fight and win or lose. You now have the spirit of justice versus injustice with you rather than just lying to yourself that you can still make this shit work. Now you're angry and angry is good because something inside of you is changing and when something changes inside you, things start changing around you and the momentum, it starts to build. But if you have kids, then you bring up that fight to a whole different level as many will use the children's as pawns of negotiation as though they're a property rather than a soul that they are. That's when you learn to hate because she, that new narcissist of a human, not only took your spouse and money, but now, now she's taking your blood, the very own people that you would die for, and she's taking them from you. To me, that's what in warfare, it's called carpet bombing. The weirdness of it all is that when she communicates with you, she expects you to respond without the fervor that she created, lacking any form of common sense here. Doesn't it just make you wonder just how little she knows about men? I mean, you don't just screw a man in the ass and expect him to buy you flowers. Things just don't work that way. So that's when I ask my clients, point blank, if they want to win. And I'm not talking the divorce because there are no winners here. Certainly not you, but there is the concept of regret and regret. Chances are you already know this, but it can be a powerful tool as it shakes the foundation of your decision making. Basically, you want to have her ask, why the fuck I left them? That's when you take control of your life. You want to win? That's what you do. You erase her. You erase her from your life as though she's just your nuisance. Because frankly, she is your nuisance. You just built herself up. The problem is, however, that some men, they get to a point where the anger, it turns into resentment. And that's when she wins. Resentment, is, it dwells up inside of you. It, it's baggage, it's hatred, it's ill will, and it only brings you down. And also, it'll bring down your children. You know what's one of the first questions I ask a client when they say that they're angry or resentful? Is they take things personal. Like somebody gives them feedback or inadvertently hurts their feelings. But those that take things personal, I've noticed that there's a lot of resentment within them. And it's up to them to see that maybe, just maybe, it wasn't a personal thing that it was a shitty circumstance by someone who didn't know any better. So I often get asked if the anger, if it goes away, that's up to you. Are you resentful? Do you take things personal? I've had men blame their ex for everything bad that took place after their split, including job loss or DUI or DUI leading to job loss. I've had men say that they married three narcissists. For me, I'm not a resentful guy. I don't take things personal. Frankly, I have a short-term memory. My first wife, if anything, I had to do the apologizing. For my second wife, She'll never be forgiven, but that's a conscious decision on my end. The important thing, though, is that I pay no mind to her. I, I've, I've moved on, and she's just an afterthought, a parenthesis in my life. I suppose that it's because I just don't give a shit about her, and I moved on. I upgraded, and I only think about her as I address these words to you because, well, I have to. I have to remember. Well, I have to.
just makes me more effective. If you're going through a divorce or a breakup, join what's become the fastest men's divorce support group on Facebook. It's free and it's confidential. And if you're looking for a divorce coach or wondering what I can do for you, schedule one 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 with me. The link for both of them in the comment section underneath, or click right here to make a one on one. Because as a coach, this is what I do. Here's my specialty, my forte. You and I will customize a plan to help in your recovery and help you get ahead of your current and future problems that you may undergo, including that broken heart of yours. Because let's face it, your balls, they've been clipped and you need them back. Well, I'm not an attorney. I've worked with dozens of them and I'll provide you with something that if you haven't noticed, attorneys, they lack a customized strategic plan and it'll pay dividends because it'll save you money. Because as a coach, I have something invaluable, the clairvoyance of a predictable outcome. I'll help you bounce so strong that that little wife of yours, she will rue the day that she gave up on you. I'll take you from A to C. So take advantage of my resources, the channel, the group, and my expert opinion. Thank you very much. Mission is to have you find the superlative version of you. Superlative. <laughs> to me, and war to me, that's carpet. To me, to me, that's. To me, that's what's considered per To me, that's considered carpet bombing and warfare. I'ma wake up through 